Hi, it's Warren from the International Colorist Academy, uh, back with another tip on uh, keyframing using the scene cut detector. And basically, what we do, it dissolves um, when we're using a baked file and the transition is baked in. So I pulled my 30 second uh, little clip here into the scene cut detector and you can see that there is a transition here. There's also a little camera move moving down, but then there is a dissolve to a rotating shot. Now this is a baked file so a lot of uh, questions arise when I'm doing training classes where do you put the cut point there? Do you put it in the middle? Do you put it to the side? Well the answer is you don't put it anywhere. You must leave this section long and find the next available cut so just hit the letter N on your keyboard and it will jump to the next cut here which is good. So we've got an out point and we've got an in point. By hitting P we can go there that is the incoming shot, frame one, frame two here. So what the answer is, I don't do anything here. I leave that free and I have to build that. So I'd add cuts to media pool, which I've already done. Come into here and I've made a timeline. So now we can see that I've got exactly the same thing here. How do I deal with this? Now, I will always do a balance grade in node one. So I will look at both shots and we'll just balance this out uh, based on both shots, really. Now, the brief here from the director is to keep the blue sky in shot two, uh, the girls playing the volleyball, and now I'm going to go for a warmer sky look in the earlier shot. Now, thing to remember here, I'm not going for, you know, a beautiful, subtle grade. For you guys to be able to see this online, the grades are going to be a little bit over the top. It's more about how we deal with this, not how I'm going to get a really beautiful grade. So remember that when you're watching. Uh, so that becomes my first node, which I sometimes just call that balance. Especially when you're learning, it makes it a lot easier just to name up your nodes so you know what's going on. So that's across both. I'm going to make another node, and I'm going to look at the second shot. And the brief here is, say, to make this all up a little bit warmer. So I'll come down here in my midtones, and I'm just going to warm that up and make that sunnier. Like that there looking into the sand of course that is going to affect this which I don't want here so what I'm going to do is to and I normally go a couple of frames in from where the actual physical dissolve in remember this dissolve is baked in and the important thing to remember here is I only want to change node 2 not node 1 so I'm going to select that there to color right click and add a dynamic keyframe play on my film a little bit and just before the end of the dissolve so I can still see the ocean there I'm going to right click add a static that means my change is going to stop so coming back here I want to take that warmth a little bit away off this shot I'm just going to pull that back and just pull my brightness down in the gain get as much information as I can it is slightly clipped there on this file so there's nothing I can do with those highlights I just want to pull that back. So now that change will happen across those points in that node. Director says I need a bit more blue sky on this shot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a layer node there. And we can see as I do that, automatically the green bar here, because I'm selected to color, will jump to node 4. And in there, I'm going to create a just a circle. I could use a grad window, but I'm going to use a circle because it's, it's very easy for just to, for us to see the softness. And I'm going to move that up to the sky just before it starts its rotate. And one thing that's quite important, when you start applying or keyframing a shape, you need to get the softness applied before you start. Because if you start keyframing the shape, the softness cannot be changed easily afterwards. And I'm just going to time in a bit more blue into that sky there. I'm then going to go back and the same shape is there, it's across, so I'm going to move that down and put that around the horizon there. And what I'm going to do, this time instead of doing a manual like I did last time, I am going to just turn on my auto keyframe here so on color correct to four and as soon as i make a tiny little move 
it will put a mark. So it knows I'm doing something. Use your expanded view. A lot of people don't use this enough. You can use your center mouse wheel I'm here on a Mac just to make that a little bit bigger. I'll expand that up like this. Again, I could be using the grad tool. I'm just using the circle. It's very easy to show my softness. Uh, I'm then going to play the film on. Go to the point through the other side where I can see the volleyballers. And as soon as I move the window up, you can see that it's automatically keyframed a mark for me. I'm just going to apply a little bit less softness there. It's quite a defined line, so that's quite good for me to do that. If anywhere in there I decided that I wanted to move while I've got this auto on, if I was to come here and slightly move that within there, it will just insert another keyframe automatically. It works very well. Thing for me to remember though is that I'm only keyframing up the geometry moves that I'm making. So the window shape I am keyframing, not the color. One thing to remember when you're using this, if I start now to make color correction changes, what will happen, it will start to, if I did this, it will start to add points and if you open up this arrow here now it's saying right you're starting to use color controls that's obviously what you want to keyframe in this instance no that can be wrong and that can cause you trouble if you don't realize you are keyframing up the color suddenly all the color is changing so now I've got a keyframe shape what I'm going to do is turn this off and I'm going to open up this here and I can adjust my green bar down to color corrector and I'm manually going to do this and at a point somewhere in here I'm going to change the color of that sky so I can put a point probably just in there as it starts to go through there again add dynamic and when it comes through the other side just before it doesn't have to be using the same length of durations as the window add static and in there I'm going to make that sky a little bit bluer in there so all I'm going to do is there is just come across to here and I'll go to there I can just then reset these guys it's a layer node so I've got original blue I'm going to make a little bit extra blue now I'm exaggerating this again so you can see exactly what that's doing. I'm not saying this is the best grade I've ever done in the world. So as I play back, I've then got the warm sky, and I'm going to exaggerate that on this side of the dissolve to make that warm, maybe give that a bit more of a slightly magenta morning. I could go back to here if I wanted to adjust any of my other attributes. So I could make the green bar there, and then I could just feather that off a little bit more. And as I play that through, we can see that that is going to change. It's the only way you can do this with a bake file. And it is important when you use this green bar just to create individual keyframing little timelines. Don't do them as one because here we can make them all different. So that is quite important. Now if I wanted to move that, I could just continue on. So I could go to the last frame there. I could then turn on my auto keyframer just for this guy, my circle, and just go to there. And then every time I move that down a little bit, I could then induce a little bit more feather to it. And you can see it's automatically adding me keyframes. Now, I'll probably be a little bit lazy and not put as many as I need here. I like the fact it grads through the ocean. It's probably how it would be in reality. So you can put in as many of these as you want, or you can maybe just jump and uh, maybe do second durations and do something like that. And then I do exactly the same here. So here I'm still in the same node. I'm still on this node here, the layer where I've done all my keyframing. I'll come back here and then where I want this to start changing I've still got that auto keyframer on. I'll say I want to make a change there. So what I do, I right click and I say add dynamic keyframe. And it automatically changes to this. Now this is a slight problem because 
I don't want that sitting to there. So what I will probably do is just go to this one and make sure that's a static keyframe. Change to static keyframe. That means that will then stop that movement. This one will now start the movement. So this just holds it. When there's nothing there, it means a static will stop the movement. Stops. That's now static. As soon as it hits this guy, it will start to move. So what I can do is, let's just go to the end of the move and we'll see if we can do it in one go. So when it stops rotating, somewhere in there, I'll get hold of this guy. And as soon as I make the move, it will add the keyframe like that. Done. Now what I said right at the beginning, the softness cannot be changed. So if I want to feather the softness there, I cannot ripple through all of these. I would physically have to go to the end and add more softness to that. Go to this point in there, add more softness there. And again, if I wanted to go through here, it's not an easy thing to feather that softness. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, you can get more information about what the International Colorist does at at icolorist.com or you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook. Um, enjoy your coloring. Thanks for watching.